Hello, hello, welcome to Accent on Cars. In this channel, we test drive cars, we talk about their exterior and interior design, driving and handling characteristics, and for used cars, we talk about reliability and cost of ownership. Also, at the end of the video, there's gonna be a bonus footage. I'm gonna take you on a virtual tour on the streets of Boston, so watch till the end. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about five things I like about my W211 Mercedes E63 AMG. This topic is kind of a cliche topic that every other YouTuber makes a video about, so I was a little hesitant about covering this topic. But then I realized that as I drove this car daily for the last two and a half years, there were things that I would periodically say to myself, such as, God, I really like this particular thing about this car, or God, I, I really don't like about this thing about the car. So I figured someone out there might be interested in hearing those or might feel the same way. As I, as I talk about five things I like about this car, please drop a comment in the comment section below if you feel the same way. As I'd be real curious to know if I'm the only one who feels particularly about some things in this car or there's somebody out there who thinks likewise. So let's get started. The first thing I like about this car is its design. Before somebody jumps on to argument with me, let me acknowledge that I do realize that design is subjective, but I personally like this design very much. I remember first seeing W211 chassis back in 2003 when it came out. I was fascinated by it. Our neighbor had one of these and I couldn't get my eyes off of it. I remember like closing my eyes and dreaming that one day I will be able to drive one of these cars. I was a teenager and too young for even being legally permitted to drive a car, but today, thanks to the fact that I've, I've grown up and to the depreciation, I can afford one of these. In fact, this is my second W211 Mercedes. The first one was W211, the same year, 2007 E350. I sold that car and I bought W212 E550, the sports AMG package. It was the one with 4.7 liters bi-turbo M278 engine. I tuned it and it was very fast and it was fully loaded, 90% of options checked on the window sticker. So it was a gorgeous car, but I sold that car to buy this 2007 E63 AMG. Some might say that I downgraded because I switched the newer Mercedes to an older Mercedes, but I'm just trying to say how much I love this design. So yeah, the first thing is the design, definitely for me. Let me know in the comments what you think about the design of W211 E63. Number two, Serenity. Number two among the things I like about this car is the feeling of serenity it gives you. This might be true about most all the Mercedes Benzes, but AMG models definitely go one step further compared to regular Mercedes Benzes. You get out of the work or you've had a long day and you're exhausted. You come to the car in the parking lot and it welcomes you with a subtly aggressive design. You pull those door handles and you get in the car. You push this cold aluminum start button which is located such that each time you push it, it feels like you're launching a jet fighter. I think cooler than this placement for the start and stop button can only be found in Lamborghinis where you have to lift the cover to start the car. Then you turn your favorite music on through amazingly sounding Harman Kardon stereo system. And sitting in the traffic suddenly isn't as annoying anymore. Softer and more expensive materials used in the interior such as luxurious Napa leather AMG seats, Alcantara headliner, soft and pillow like leather on door handles and inner door trim different steering rack, this all add up to that feeling of serenity you get from the car. It's a truly nice place to be. The steering is perfectly balanced. It isn't too heavy and it isn't too light. But the steering rack is also something I don't like about this car, but more on that in future videos. Aromatics just makes this car even more serene if you want to. You can glide over the road irregularities and bridge connections in soft and plushy comfort setting, or you can put it in Sport 1 and Sport 2 settings for a stiffer and sportier ride. I really do not understand those people who convert to coilovers. Number 3. Practicality The third thing I like about this car is its practicality. It's a big sedan that can comfortably sit four people for long distances and five people for mid to short distances. This car is my daily driver and I use it for everything. Usually there is a child seat in the back of this car. I've transported long mattresses and stuff from Ikea in it. Folding and removable seats make it even more practical. It has a decent amount of storage inside the car. There are small compartments in each door. 
there are two cup holders in the back armrest and two in the front armrest. In addition to the regular glove compartment, it has this small sliding compartment that could be used for storing coins or business cards, which should have been ideal for the rich businessmen who bought this car brand new, as they could easily store and find all the business cards they collected from their business trips. The car has a decent sized trunk. My favorite feature in the trunk is the existence of a spare tire. I've used it twice by the way when I hit a mother of all potholes over here in Massachusetts. Our state takes pride in the deepest potholes in the country. There's also a small organizer in the trunk. I use it for storing tire pressure gauge and things of that nature. Another favorite feature in the trunk are these hooks. They are extremely useful for hanging your shopping bags. I use them all the time and I love them. And there are two of them. I don't really understand why Mercedes-Benz reduced their number down to one in W212. Some W212 even came with this basket kind of thing instead of these hooks, which wasn't as practical as the hooks because not all the shopping bags can fit in that basket. Okay, so number four in the list of things that I like about this car is the interior build quality. It's a very well built interior, it's very solid. Every, every way I touch and push just feels so sturdy. There is no scratches or squeaks whatsoever in this interior. Uh, we all know that Mercedes-Benz's quality or any German car's quality for that matter has gone down since 1990s. Modern day cars are even worse. Uh, the, you know, the, the glossy plastic that they, they use in the interior just makes so much squeaks and rat rattles. That's especially true about 2020 C-Class. I don't want to get a lot of hate from C-Class owners, but that glossy, scratchy plastic they've used around the center infotainment just makes so much like crunchy and squeaky sound each time you put your hands on it. Let's say, for example, you are dusting it or you are hitting a road, a bump or pothole on the road. It just like makes that annoying crunchy sound that drives me nuts. And I'm saying this because I've driven six of them, okay? And they all were the same. Although I should say that uh, my W211 E350 did have some rattles in the interior, but there is none in this one. AMGs must have a little better build quality in the interior as well. The only like hard plastic used in this car is this bezel around the speedometer. And that one might, might be scratched. Oh my God, let's have this hard acceleration for a second. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, I just could not resist. It's a wide and open road. <laughs> okay so yeah what i was saying is that the only squeaky plastic in this interior is this basil around the speedometer because that's the only hard plastic used in this interior and that one may make some like squeaking sound especially in the summertime when the interior warms up and the plastic expands so it may make a, a, like, a sound over the bumps, but that's very minor. Overall, it's a very solid interior. The last thing in this list, the last thing I like about this car in this list is, of course, the engine and the transmission. I could talk about the engine and transmission for hours, but for the sake of this video, I'll be short. This car is equipped with 6.2 liters naturally aspirated V8 indexed as M156. It's a truly amazing V8. It produces 507 horsepower and it loves revving. The red line starts at 7200 RPMs, but you know, sometimes you go, you go above that. You could reach from zero to 60 miles an hour in less than uh, five seconds, you know, in lower four seconds. In fact, I managed to get to 60 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds every time I try it with my half-worn all-season tires that are definitely not the right tires for this car as you know this car deserves that like summer tires or at least Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 3s or something of that nature 
and the way this engine sounds is is, is an orgasm to your ears it loves revving it loves screaming it's especially loud if you you know uh, some people will delete the resonators uh, and, and they will put like X pipe or straight line instead of resonators that makes the engine even louder and even more uh, more like brutally barking kind of sound this engine has won many prizes including international engine of the year award in 2009 I'm sorry in 2010 I believe this was the most powerful naturally aspirated engine of its own time like I said the index index of the engine is M156 and its more beefed up version was indexed as M159 and was installed in Mercedes SLS AMG cars uh, and that same engine, of course modernized and uh, improved a little, is being used in the Mercedes GT3 AMG today, in our days. Can you imagine the AMG GT3 is their most track-oriented car of all time and they use 6.2 liters naturally aspirated V8 in it. I just wanted to pause for a second and internalize that. They use M159 in the most track-oriented AMG ever. That means something, doesn't it? They did not use their 5.5 liter by turbo, nor did they use their 4.0 turbo engine. But of course, this engine wasn't perfect. It had its own shortcomings. The biggest of the, oh, the biggest of which is its reliability. It's a very reliable car. Don't get me wrong. For a high, high revving performance racing tuned engine it's very very reliable but it just wasn't as reliable as its predecessor m113k uh, the supercharged engine which made a lot of people pissed and a lot of people and because of that a lot of people have love and hate relationship with this engine but i should say that even those who say that they don't like this engine because it's not reliable blah 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 deep inside themselves they admire this engine they wish they just wish that this was as reliable as M113K, so they so they would upgrade. Uh, yeah, it's a very smooth engine. It can be very comfortable in day-to-day -day driving, but it, and it can be very sporty. And you can like rev it up all the way to like 75, 100 RPMs and enjoy that exhaust note. Now let's talk about the transmission. Transmission in this car is a seven-speed transmission. It is indexed as 722.9 it's a successor to the five speed 722.6 transmissions found in e55s the transmission is very smooth in it has three modes comfort sport one and sport two in comfort it's really uh you know smooth it starts in the second gear it's perfect for daily driver daily driving sport one makes it a little uh, I'm sorry, there is no sport on sport, there is sport on manual. Sport makes it sportier, it starts in the first gear, it shifts faster, and the manual is a true automatic manual in that you can rev up to the, you can rev up and hit the rev limiter, it will not upshift for you like some other transmissions do. So it gives you that true manual experience. And in manual mode, it's even more exciting. I think it's the most exciting way of driving this car and if you happen to be on a racetrack or somewhere putting it in a manual mode is the way to go anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this was helpful these were five things that i i like the most about this car and i'm gonna make another video where i will talk about five things i don't like about this car so stay tuned hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel uh, Write a comment if you want to add something to, to what I covered today. And I think it's enough talking. Let's go for a ride in Boston, shall we?